Have you ever been to a farmer's market, looking for your favorite product, only to find it sold out? Or perhaps you've seen a frenzy on Black Friday, where people are fighting for the last TV on the shelf. This is the power of supply and demand at work. It's a phenomenon that's been around since the dawn of civilization, where the forces of supply and demand can make or break entire economies. But how does it work, and why do some products cost more than others? In this video, we're going to take you on a thrilling journey through the world of supply and demand, where we'll uncover the secrets behind the prices of various goods and services. From food to electronics, we'll explore how the interplay of supply and demand can affect the prices we pay for the things we need and want. The world of supply and demand is like an invisible hand that guides the prices of goods and services. It's a concept that's been around for centuries, but it's still as relevant today as it was in the days of Adam Smith. So let's dive deeper into the invisible hand and how it shapes markets through the forces of supply and demand. Picture yourself in a crowded market, surrounded by vendors selling everything from fresh fruits to handmade crafts. The air is filled with the sounds of haggling and bartering, as buyers and sellers negotiate prices. You may not realize it, but this market is an excellent example of the invisible hand at work. The invisible hand is a concept that was first introduced by Adam Smith, a Scottish economist in the 18th century. Smith believed that markets left to their own devices, would operate efficiently and lead to the greatest possible benefit for society as a whole. This was because the forces of supply and demand would naturally guide prices to their optimal levels, and resources would be allocated efficiently. But how does the invisible hand work in practice? Let's take a look at an example. Imagine a sudden heatwave hits the city, and people are rushing to buy fans to cool down. As the demand for fans increases, the price of fans will naturally rise. This sends a signal to producers that there's an opportunity to make a profit by producing more fans. As more fans are produced, the supply of fans increases, and the price begins to come down. Eventually, the price will stabilize at a level that reflects the new balance of supply and demand. But what if there's a sudden shortage of the materials needed to produce fans, such as plastic? This would disrupt the supply chain and cause imbalances in supply and demand. As a result, the price of fans could skyrocket, leaving some people unable to afford them. This is where the role of government comes in, which we'll explore in more detail later. However, when supply and demand are in balance, the market can send powerful signals through prices that guide decision-making and lead to efficient allocation of resources. This is known as the power of price signals, and it's a crucial element of the free market system. By using price signals to allocate resources, the market can operate efficiently and respond to changes in supply and demand. Let's take a closer look at how this works in different industries. For example, in the coffee industry, the price of coffee beans can fluctuate based on supply and demand. This sends signals to coffee shop owners about how much coffee to order and when to order it. In the fashion industry, prices can signal which styles are in demand, prompting retailers to stock up on certain items and discontinue others. These price signals can also have an impact on global supply chains. For instance, if there's a shortage of a particular raw material used to manufacture goods, the price of that material will rise, signaling to manufacturers that they should reduce their use of it or find alternatives. In some cases, price signals can even lead to innovations and advancements in technology. For example, when the price of oil rises, it becomes more expensive to produce and transport goods. This creates an incentive for companies to invest in alternative energy sources or more fuel-efficient technology. All of these examples demonstrate the power of price signals and how they shape decision-making in the market. But what happens when price signals fail to work properly? For example, what if a natural disaster or other unforeseen event disrupts the market and causes prices to fluctuate in unpredictable ways? This is where government intervention comes into play. The government has a role in regulating the market and ensuring that it operates in a fair and efficient manner. There are various ways that the government can intervene, including setting price controls, imposing tariffs, and regulating industries. One example of government intervention is price controls. This is when the government sets a maximum or minimum price for a particular good or service. For example, during times of crisis, the government may set price controls on essential items like food and medicine to prevent price gouging, and ensure that everyone has access to these goods. Another example is the imposition of tariffs. 
Tariffs are taxes on imported goods, which can make them more expensive and less competitive in the domestic market. The government may impose tariffs to protect domestic industries or to address trade imbalances with other countries. Regulation is another form of government intervention, which can involve setting safety standards, environmental regulations, and other rules to ensure that businesses operate in a responsible and ethical manner. All of these forms of government intervention have pros and cons, and there is ongoing debate about the appropriate role of government in the market. But ultimately, government intervention is necessary to ensure that the market operates in a way that benefits everyone, not just a select few. In the next section, we'll take a closer look at the impact of government intervention and explore some real-world examples of its successes and failures, and examine how it can affect the market and our daily lives. Throughout history, governments have implemented a wide range of interventions to try to shape the market in certain ways. From taxes and subsidies to price controls and regulations, these interventions can have significant effects on the behavior of both buyers and sellers. But do they always work as intended? To answer this question, we'll look at some real-world examples of government intervention, both successful and unsuccessful. We'll examine the impact of minimum wage laws, the effects of rent control, and the successes and failures of government subsidies for certain industries. By the end of this section, you'll have a deeper understanding of how government intervention can shape the market and the impact it can have on our lives. So let's dive in. One of the most famous examples of government intervention is the New Deal, which was introduced by President Franklin D. Roosevelt in response to the Great Depression in the 1930s. The New Deal included a range of policies and programs aimed at stimulating the economy and creating jobs. One of the most successful programs was the Works Progress Administration, WPA, which employed millions of people to build infrastructure such as roads, bridges, and schools. The WPA not only helped to reduce unemployment, but it also created lasting benefits for communities across the country. However, not all government interventions have been successful. In the 1970s, the US government introduced price controls on gasoline in response to rising prices. While the policy was intended to make gasoline more affordable for consumers, it ultimately led to shortages and long lines at gas stations. The price controls also discouraged investment in the oil industry, which had long-term negative effects on the economy. Another example of government intervention that had mixed results is the Affordable Care Act, ACA, also known as Obamacare. The ACA aimed to expand access to health care by requiring individuals to have health insurance and providing subsidies to make insurance more affordable. While the policy has helped millions of Americans gain access to health care, it has also been criticized for increasing health care costs and limiting consumer choice. In recent years, the government has also intervened in the economy through policies aimed at addressing climate change. For example, the government has provided subsidies for renewable energy sources such as wind and solar power while also imposing taxes and regulations on industries that contribute to climate change. While these policies have had some success in reducing carbon emissions, they have also faced opposition from industries and individuals who argue that they are too costly or restrictive. As we've seen, government policies can have a significant impact on supply and demand in the market economy. However, there is no one-size-fits-all solution when it comes to government intervention. Some policies have been successful, while others have faced opposition or unintended consequences. Let's take the example of minimum wage laws. On one hand, these policies can increase the purchasing power of low-wage workers, potentially boosting consumer demand and stimulating economic growth. On the other hand, if the minimum wage is set too high, it could lead to layoffs or reduced hours for workers, which could actually hurt the very people the policy is meant to help. Another example is trade tariffs, which are taxes imposed on imported goods. Supporters of tariffs argue that they protect domestic industries from foreign competition, which can help to create jobs and support local economies. However, opponents argue that tariffs can lead to retaliatory measures from other countries, which could hurt exports and ultimately harm the overall economy. So, how can policymakers navigate these complex issues and make informed decisions about government intervention? It's not easy but by carefully considering the potential impacts of policies and weighing the costs and benefits, they can make decisions that support market efficiency and promote economic growth. In the next section, 
we'll explore some creative solutions that businesses and governments are using to manage supply and demand imbalances in the market economy. When it comes to managing supply and demand in the market economy, unexpected events can create challenges for even the most well-intentioned policies. Natural disasters, pandemics, and other disruptions can cause imbalances in supply and demand, which can lead to price spikes, shortages, and other market inefficiencies. One recent example is the COVID-19 pandemic, which led to widespread supply chain disruptions and shortages of essential goods like personal protective equipment and medical supplies. These disruptions highlighted the importance of resilience and flexibility in supply chains and businesses and governments alike have been exploring new solutions to manage these challenges. One such solution is the use of data analytics to forecast demand more accurately. By analyzing data on past purchasing patterns, businesses can better anticipate future demand and adjust their production and supply chain strategies accordingly. Governments are also investing in infrastructure to improve supply chain resilience, such as building more robust transportation networks or increasing energy storage capacity. But creative solutions aren't just limited to supply chain management. Some businesses are exploring new models of production and distribution, such as 3D printing or shared distribution networks, that can help to reduce costs and improve efficiency. And some governments are experimenting with new policy approaches, such as carbon pricing or targeted subsidies, to promote more sustainable and equitable market outcomes. Overall, the key to managing supply and demand imbalances is flexibility and innovation. By embracing new technologies, strategies, and policies, businesses and governments can adapt to changing market conditions and promote more efficient and sustainable economic growth. As you can see, understanding the dynamics of supply and demand is crucial for anyone interested in the global economy. We hope this video has provided you with a valuable introduction to these concepts and their real-world implications. If you found this video informative, please consider subscribing to our channel for more content like this. And don't forget to like and share this video with your friends and colleagues. Thank you for watching.